Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtide Media, and I wouldn't say it's any surprise to know that, uh, you know, Anthony Fantano is a bit of a big inspiration for me on this channel. I mean, look at my setup. I have a green screen wall here, exactly like he does. I sort of sit in the middle. I've got uh, not a ton of records. I got some stuff here. I've, I I take after the channel quite a bit. I like to do reviews, even though I I, I wish I'd like to do them more. Uh, but I do reviews. I do monthly roundup stuff. I do I do a lot of stuff that Anthony Fantano does because I think his formula is great. I believe his content is amazing. That being said, some of his reviews are quite infamous, I would say, other than his, I mean, number one is the My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy Kanye West album being a six out of 10, uh, which is almost universally praised as one of the greatest albums of the last decade. Uh, but one thing in particular from EDM fans is his Porter Robinson World's album review. And so we are going to give a little bit of a reaction slash looking at this video and seeing does it really stand the test of time because this is from eight years ago. This this project and this review is eight years ago. And so we're going to kind of look back at this. I haven't looked at this video since then, it, since, then since it originally came out, this review. But uh, let's go back and uh, watch it and listen to it. So uh, I must say, uh, first of all, um, two things I noticed. Number one, uh, yellow flannel. He gives it a yellow flannel, uh, and I, I'm not sure if this was really canonized at this point, if the yellow flannel was canon as this, like, it's going to be a good album, because nowadays, yellow flannel is a good album, red is a bad album, that's sort of what he does, that's his style, and so, even though he doesn't give it a good score, a spoiler, he does give this a 5 out of 10, he gives it a 5 out of 10, the album in the end, and uh, look at this like to dislike ratio, look at that, that is horrible. Uh, because people do not like his review this. So, quickly, let's get into this and uh, see what we think of this, uh, this review from Anthony Fantano. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Porter Robinson record, Worlds. This guy is a North Carolina-based producer and songwriter who is dropping his full-length debut right here via Astral Works this year. He has been making quite a bit of buzz with some of the singles to drop from this record so far, like Flickr and Sad Machine. He's been grabbing ears in the wider world of pop music, but already he's kind of made a name for himself in the EDM world. I know he's done a, a mix for UKF. He's also had the Spitfire EP that's dropped a few years ago, which was essentially an EP of Electro House tunes, Bro Step. I thought Robinson's approach to True. these styles of electronic music was really epic. Like on the title track to this thing, there's this very refined building set of synth sequences that feel like they could come straight out of a soundtrack. And the song also features one of the most chaotic drops I've ever had the pleasure of laying ears on. With EDM at the top of... Okay, so this is very fascinating. So we're a minute in and he spent a seventh of the video sort of talking about his Spitfire EP beforehand, um, which is universally... Porter Robinson's weakest project. I think it is It is no doubt to say that it, it's probably his weakest project. Um, very different. Yes, he was right. The very bro kind of dubstep electro house age. And uh, people, it didn't, it didn't really age well. It wasn't as fantastic off the bat. And so it's fascinating to hear him compliment Spitfire when this album in particular, Worlds, that he didn't really appreciate is like, was a defining moment in EDM history. So very fascinating mainstream music culture right now, I would figure that Porter Robinson could just continue in this lane, continue in this genre, and he would just gain fans as a result of naturally being involved in a style of music that's hot right now. But instead, he's decided to change up his musical style into something that I think has a bit more crossover appeal. Because on this LP, Rob Totally fair, totally fair, which makes sense. He, Porter Robinson, totally could have gone the route of just making that bro dubstep style for forever, but then transformed his style and his whole artist persona into something that is now, like I said before, iconic, that has become a sound. It is a Porter Robinson sound. It is a, a style that is very him rather than a style that is just like of the era of the times. Robinson is essentially making Indietronic music, glitch pop, dream pop, chill wave, maybe a little of that French electro house sound that was popular in the late 2000s thanks to Justice. This whole 2000s era of music actually seems to be incredibly important to Robinson's music. Just imagine the biggest names in these styles like Passion Pit and Crystal Castles, M83, Justice, The Naked and Famous, 
Postal Service in Owl City, Washed Out, Neon Indian, early, early MGMT. Imagine all of them, but with bombastic EDM-style drum timbres rocking behind them. That's what Porter Robinson does on this LP. It's not terrible, but it's not really exciting in concept to me, and it's not exciting in execution either. The idea... That is a fascinating comment that you can go from saying that it is a culmination of all of these sounds and styles with an EDM twist and flair to it, and yet it's underwhelming to him. That is fascinating that that's what he uses to describe it first. And it's like a big setup and then just, just tears it down. The idea of this album being mind blowing is like watching someone lose their shit over store brand cereal or soda. Yes, for sure. At the end of the day, some people might prefer honey O's to honey nut Cheerios, but nobody's coming in saying, oh man, those honey nut O's, man, they're changing the game, man. However, I could definitely see this elf. <laughs> That's a, um, that's a funny comment. Uh, I, I sort of get what he's coming from, but I feel like he, that is devaluing what Porter actually did. And we do have hindsight bias here. We do, we do have hindsight bias where, uh, the, this really was the transformation. This is the honey oats, the honey oats now are literally, this is the new thing. This is the new greatest thing. And the other thing is actually the commercial bland everyone has. And this new honey oats is actually the greatest thing in the world. And so, and that may just be a product of hindsight bias because we are eight years removed from this project, but uh, it's an interesting metaphor that actually lands in the opposite direction using hindsight. Making waves in the EDM world because it presents a sound that is yet to cross over into that world. But for somebody who is a fan of a lot of the artists or have merely just experienced the artists that Robinson pulls from so obviously, this record isn't that thrilling to me. Because in my opinion, he doesn't really craft these influences into anything characteristically different. The glitchy swirls of synth it's fascinating that he says it doesn't feel different. It feels like too much of a product of those artists and, and projects that he mentioned earlier, and it doesn't feel like anything wildly different because I just like straight up fully disagree with that. I feel like this project was revolutionary in its sound uh, in bringing that crossover that he's talking about of having this sort of Indietronica weird synth pop sound with a EDM twist to it that really wasn't done before. And so I just straight up disagree with what he has to say here. Straight up disagree synthesizers bleh, 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 that occasionally pop up in these tracks feel like they could have come out of an early Crystal Castles track. The song Sad Machine or Divinity had these buzzing, loud synthesizer chords and bright, peppy melodies that could have come out of any number of Owl City or M83 tracks. The song Years of War has a bright, synthetic lead melody that could have come out of an early MGMT single. And on top of that, the song Lionhearted, in its verses and the vocals on these verses too, it actually sounds just like an early MGMT song. For me, this record is just a gauntlet of songs that sound a lot like other artists, with the exception of maybe the back end of the LP, where you get songs like Sea of Voices, which is kind of a long, spacious interlude track with just a sea of synth layers on them, very ethereal. And then after this track, we get songs that have more of an overt EDM influence on them with those driving house beats. These tracks I actually like and, and don't quite mind. The final track on this LP hmm. is actually pretty gorgeous, melodically, but leading up to that last leg of this album, the rest of this LP, compositionally, is pretty run-of-the-mill. However, that's not to say that it's inherently bad. I mean, Robinson seems to take quite a bit of care into recreating this stuff. The production is very crisp, it's lush, it's clean, the melodies pour through very brightly and are sticky and catchy. The songs, for the most part, all have a very nice pace to them, a very nice groove, very explosive, exuberant choruses. And overall, I do think it's a cohesive album with a pretty nice flow, with the more dynamic and, and gentle tracks toward the very end of the LP. It's not a record that really seems to be focused on its singles or focused on creating a series of singles. It has a nice conceptual flow to it. Robinson definitely grabs a sound or an idea and 
kind of runs with it. So I definitely give him... I think that's... that's. I think he's sort of devaluing the whole narrative of this project at this point. And so I know in particular Anthony Fenteno and he's rubbed off to me, rubbed off on me in this sense where I very much love and look for those kind of concept, those large concept ideas where uh, there is a narrative through line from top to bottom. There is a storyline being told and worlds tells the storyline of like synthetic life sort of coming and taking over uh there the destruction of the world happening one way or another sort of in an abstract nature and how in the end there's just a single kind of entity and ai and a, and a person left and then the world is that, that's sort of the conclusion of goodbye to a world so i i'm i'm shocked that for someone that loves conceptual st- conceptual three lines that anthony didn't really copy or didn't really what's the word Did, didn't really stay or so i don't know i'm just surprised that anthony for someone that loves those conceptual through lines didn't really feel like the need to talk about it in length maybe he will later but just felt like it wasn't maybe as overt uh through the listening th- through and so i i don't know i don't know fascinating fascinating to me kudos on on trying to craft a holistic, ambitious record. And there are some whimsical melodies buried in the very loud EDM style production on this thing. Even if they are a little smothered and mostly delivered with these very cutesy female vocaloid vocals. So you're kind of getting this really cute baby pitch the cheeks of a robot <laughs> kind of feel. And then there are tracks That's like a great way Flicker, to put it. which have a very nice strong funk electro groove to them and a sort of dirty grimy distorted bass line directly after there's fresh static snow which i think has an even more distorted bass line and i love that robinson can appropriately balance these distorted harsh heavy elements with some very beautiful melodies the dude is definitely a capable producer but i think his songwriting ideas just run really thin not only were they thin at the beginning of the album where it was very apparent where all of them were coming from but by the middle point of the album it kind of gets old to hear all of these decent melodies and kind of cutesy vocals get buried underneath tons of distorted and overly compressed drums and synths not only that but some of the tracks Hmm. in the middle of this lp have these faux uplifting choruses that feel like they were just crafted to pander to a group of people who get their music recommendations from like apple product commercials so while that is such a fascinating note that again he comes back to this how it's just a bland kind of boring thing or like it's it's the the honey oats version of cheerios or whatever because i wouldn't say this album was overly commercial in the sense that he's saying it is i i wouldn't say it's a very uh very wide-reaching friendly it isn't very commercial isn't very uh like easy listening to kind of get into yes there's there's those kind of bigger tracks he's talked about here that that feel like a little bit more uplifting and feel that kind of easy to get into but as a holistic project it's it's not something you're going to see from the basic listening habits not something i feel like you would see on an apple recommended playlist like i just feel like it isn't like like fresh static snow, like freshly fellow feeling, like those are just like kind of a little bit more explosive sounds that for the time eight years ago felt very new and felt very not as mainstream at all. And so I'm just, again, just hard disagree with what Fantano's saying here. Hard disagree. No, oh, this is not like a god awful album or anything like that. I can't really say I'm enjoying it. Honestly, I enjoyed his last EP so much more, and I would have rather heard him follow through on that EDM style. I think he was some- That is by far the statement that is, I believe, is the the least, (laughs) the least aged, the, the most poorly aged. And I think he would genuinely go back on that statement now. After hearing Nurture and him giving Nurture a good review, um, I would say he would definitely walk that statement back now where he said Porter Robinson should have just stuck to the bro step. Uh, I think uh, I think he would have walked that back uh, in, in hindsight. Much closer to a distinct sound going in that direction. With that, it feels like on this record, he's kind of hit the reset button because now he just kind of sounds like any other artist toying with these sounds. For sure, yeah, his drum- Any artist toying with these sounds? Who's toying with these sounds? You at the beginning said that, yes, it's a mix of MG&T, M83, Owl City, all these different artists. But, like, it was an EDM fusion of that that was more EDM-focused rather than this kind of indie-tronica, indie-electro-pop focus. And so, who else was doing this at the time? 
people aren't doing this at the time. Like, I just, again, hard disagree are louder and he's using these vocaloid vocals more than I think most artists do playing with this style but that's not really enough for me to celebrate it or bow to it or enjoy it. It's fine. If you're crazy about these styles of music more than I am, at least try it out. Robinson has been listening so closely that he has the technical side down and like I said it's not like he's doing these styles of music and injustice. It's just not anything incredibly exciting or refreshing to me in terms of the sound, the songwriting, which is why I'm feeling a strong five to a light six on this thing. Tran, Zition, if you've given this record. So I get it. Obviously this is his own opinion. This is his thoughts. This is his idea on the project, but I just feel like, I don't know. I just feel like he got it wrong. I feel like, he got, again, obviously it's his opinion. He can think whatever he wants. That's the point of music reviews. But uh, I just feel like just statement wise and where this album landed in the whole musical landscape in the end just felt like, I don't know, this album was praised a lot at the beginning and it's praised in hindsight. And I just think, I just think it's a style that Anthony just, just didn't get, that he just didn't understand. Just like, I don't really get... 100 gecks. I don't get the hyper pop stuff right now, and so I don't really appreciate it, and I think this is the same way Anthony just didn't quite get it. So, that's it. Um, but before we leave, we will uh, 